Necros is seen as one of the best decks of all time, period. And even that not, it's revered as the best ritual deck. Why? Because not only is this deck predicated on locking the opponent out of the extra deck, it also does a really good job of having secondary effects where every single Necros monster serves as some type of hand trap, whether it's a reinforcement of the army or just completely preventing your monsters from being destroyed to completely preventing your monsters from being, or from your opponent's monsters from attacking. You can say that a lot of people will put their necks out to say that this deck is competitive, but I want to say that this deck is better at crossing out the competition. Get it? Net cross out the competition. I'm the Cali Effect, and if you guys want to see more videos like this, then go ahead and destroy that subscribe button. But more importantly, go ahead and hit that notification bell because, well, we're just too strong. I also want to take this time to give a special shout out to every single one of my Patreons. Without you guys, videos like this would not be possible. I appreciate every single one of you guys, and I'm so grateful for your continued support. Another shout out I want to give out to is to everybody that is subscribed and notified, picking this as the video that you guys want to see. I really do appreciate you guys when I make posts and you comment down below on them, and this is a product of what you want to see. Without further ado, I present to you a competitive Necros deck profile for this format. All right, guys, so before we start off with showing off the deck, let's look at the stats a little bit. I think that Necros is a very, very powerful deck. Unfortunately, I think that its ceiling is at a regional level right now. I think that the Forbid World, one Forbidden List LA, maybe Shirt comes off the list, maybe Unicorn Brian comes off the list, and this deck is extremely powerful. That's how good that it is aged. It's also a very expensive deck for its status. I think that if you guys have this deck, then you probably don't have a budget seeing that this deck has only gotten more expensive in price as time has gone on. But let's start talking about these cards and why the deck is so powerful and how it could be used to counter the meta. Okay, so starting off with the monsters, we actually do run one card in this deck that I think just isn't really mandatory. Necroz of Decisive Armor um, gives your Necroz monsters a thousand attack, that's his hand trap effect, and its on field effect allows you to banish set cards for free. So um, he's a pretty good card. You could drop him out for a sixth hand trap. Right now, I'll only play five. I'll leave it up to you guys. The most important Necroz monster when it comes to just outright breaking your opponent's board and winning games will be Necros of Trishula. And when this monster is ritual summoned, you can banish a card from your opponent's hand, field, and graveyard. Now, in order to activate and resolve this effect, your opponent actually does need monsters in their hand, field, and or cards in their hand, field, and graveyard to use them. So you have to use him wisely. Um, I decided to go with one instead of two because you just don't need two. Um, there's so many ways to summon Trishula back from your graveyard to your side of the field, and other ways to summon Trishula from your hand to your side of the field. I just didn't see um, me activating more than Trishula's effect, more than twice in a game because normally two times in a game will win you the game his end effect is also really good against nightmare monsters because you know they destroy cards or they target cards on your side of the field you discard the trishula and you can negate that effect next is three copies of necros valkyrius this card is easily one of the best necros monsters in the game why because when he's on the field you can tribute necros monsters or monsters on your hand and field to draw cards um and the maximum is two the minimum is one also the tributing of his effect is not a cost it is at the resolution so that's pretty good in case your opponent wants to ash blossom and joyous spring you his next most important effect is if your opponent declares an attack you can discard him and banish a necros card to negate that attack so you have a built-in battle fader inside of your deck he is a must at three he's just that powerful next is one copy of necros of gungnir this card is actually used to protect all your neck or one of your necros monsters on the side of the field um normally you want to use this to protect your unicorn because unicorn is an absolute blowout against your opponent preventing them from activating their extra deck monster effects um back then it was like a tech card they, it wasn't mandatory but now especially seeing that it has a zodiac dryden effect when it's on the field it's pretty important Next is one copy of Necros of Brionic. This is one of the limited Necros cards that we would be playing three of it. Um, it is the reinforcement of the army in the deck, allowing you to search any of your Necros cards from your deck to your, or monsters from your deck to your hand. Its on-field effect is really good, but it's going to be far and few between where you'll actually use it. Bouncing extra deck monsters on your opponent's side of the field to the hand or back to their extra deck is pretty good. Uh, one copy of Necros of Cataster. This card actually was never played in the Necros of before, but it's so good inside of this deck, mainly because it's one of the only Necros monsters that can summon itself by sending a corresponding level for it. So all of your level seven and higher Necros monsters 
can be summoned using their respective level so for example i can't send a level eight monster as you know requirement to summon valkyries to summon valkyries Cataster can, and anytime it battles, a monster from the extra deck can be destroyed immediately. It also does help me summon higher level Necros relatively easily, such as Volk and Trishula. Banishing this monster with Mirror is too good. Next is one copy of Necros a Unicorn. This is the best Necros when it comes to disrupting your opponent. The reason why Necros can stay so viable while it is on the field any monster special summon from the extra deck just cannot activate their effects it's it's that powerful i wish it was at more than one it's other effect of discarding to add a necros card from your graveyard to your hand is good but seeing that you want him on the field he becomes really like you kind of can't use that effect you're just stuck with summoning him three copies of necros a colossus now this monster is dumb important to the deck and i'm going to give you guys the reason why the reason why he's so important is because not only does it search your field spell or i'm sorry your necros ritual spells um him in your hand plus any of your necros monsters except for decisive armor can ritual summon both of these monsters to your side of the field using necros kaleidoscope i actually explained it a little bit more in the combo tutorial next we run one great sorcerer when he's tributed you get to add a spellcaster cough cough these any of these two guys from your deck to your hand for free or even your necros a unicorn from your deck to your hand for free he's too good to ignore one copy of dance princess of the necros when she is banished you can add one of your banished necros monsters to your hand so these two cards are really important for the necros strategy in my opinion because they provide so much like advantage for you and get you exactly what you need uh, we don't run any of the other Necros cards. While they're good, uh, you know, they, they do have their, like, picks. We don't run any of the other Necros cards. While they are uh, situational at best, uh, they actually, they're pretty good. But they don't provide as much value as the other or as the ones that we're currently playing. Hopefully, if the Forbidden List does go in our favor, releasing one of the cards off the Forbidden List, any of them, it doesn't matter, this deck becomes a lot more viable, and some of the other cards can be looked at again. Onto the support cards, only three copies of Manju of 10,000 hands. In my humble opinion, you don't need Sinju because Sinju um, only searches monsters. Manju is going to search either or. And then you follow up with the new cards from Cybernetic Horizon. Three copies of Incantation Talismandra and three copies of Incantation Candle. This adds so much consistency to the deck because with these nine cards, you'll be able to search almost any card that you need from your deck to your hand it just allows you to go so much deeper into your combos and seeing that the deck doesn't special summon from the extra deck anyways the uh you know i guess the drawback of the incantation monsters doesn't exist that's it for those cards you really want to get into your ritual cards three copies of joel and lockbird for the hand traps best hand trap in the game and then i followed up with two copies of ash blossom and joyous spring again if you guys don't want to run more hand traps the cataster or not the cataster i'm sorry the necros of decisive armor can be dropped uh, to play a third Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring or Droll and Lock, or I'm sorry, or Effect Veilers or Ghost Ogres, depending on your current meta. Next for the spells is three Call by the Grave. Uh, this deck actually used to run Cypher Gear Gamma. I just didn't like clogging with Driver. Driver doesn't do much. Um, and while I did sacrifice a little bit of moving on my opponent's turn, I actually gained still the same thing with Call by the Grave. A little bit more disruption and preventing my opponent from playing Yu-Gi-Oh, depending on what I'm banishing. Three copies of Preparation of the Rights to search any monster that I need for my deck to my hand just about. Uh, especially if I can still search out Brionic, because Brionic can then search anything I need. Um, that's it for the supporting spells. We run two of each ritual spell. Kaleidoscope is a lot more powerful than people like to give it um, because it can special summon monsters or Necros monsters from your hand to your side of the field using monsters from your extra deck. So that's pretty much free. Two copies of Necros Cycle. This is going to special summon the Necros monsters from your graveyard to your side of the field, acting as a monster reborn in the ritual summon. Really powerful. And two copies of Necros Mirror. This is a card I debated on using three, but I just didn't need three. I decided to go back to the 2-2-2 two, two, two ratio because that's what worked best for Necros before, and it seemed to not change. The best thing about Necros Mirror now is that you can banish those Necros monsters in your graveyard, which is why I was very selective on the Necros monsters I wanted to play in this deck i wanted to be able to hit all of my necros monsters at any given time and this ritual lineup or this ritual spell lineup really helped me now that i'm done with the main board at 40 cards uh 28 monsters and 12 spells let's get you guys to the extra deck okay so i'm pretty much can blaze through this extra deck mainly because there's not really much to talk about it you basically play one of every monster that allows you to summon multiple ritual monsters uh from your deck to your side of the field because you can abuse Necros Kaleidoscope to summon Necros monsters to your side of the field again. One shooting Quasar, uh, it can be made with Valkyries plus 
um, Unicorn or, or Trishula in hand plus uh, Colossus. It's just good. Shooting Star Dragon. There's actually a nasty combo with these two cards. Um, but unfortunately, Incantation uh, uh, Talismandra prevents me from going into the extra deck or I would be able to make um, Insector Ixa Beetle and then equip the Shooting Quasar and then summon Shooting Star Dragon from my deck to my side of the field. Uh, two copies of Mega Fleet Dragon. One is because it's a 10. The other one is because, I don't know, I side Cyber Dragons. Trishula, Cypher and Little Mega. This is the best eight because it allows you to cycle it and another card back into your deck. Black Rose Dragon, Coral Dragon, High Speed World Chambara. These are just six, seven, and fives. Uh, Herald of Arclight, best four in the game because it allows you to search a ritual monster. Elder Entity Entis allows you to destroy a card on your opponent's side of the field so you get an either or. Uh, that's just a level three that I picked out at random. And then we run a couple of Link monsters, just spot removal with Cerebrus and Phoenix. And then Nightmare Unicorn. I mean, again, there's not really much else to talk about with the extra deck because it's so bland. You can almost play whatever you want as long as you play enough levels for you to abuse your Necros Kaleidoscope to send the appropriate cards to your graveyard to summon your ritual monsters. Keep in mind, the reason why I'm playing these uh, extra deck monsters that have levels is so I can send them to the graveyard so I can summon my Necros monsters with ease. That's it for the extra deck. Let's get you into the side deck. Side deck wise, it's pretty standard. Of course, we're gonna run the Cyber Dragon. I think this is the best side deck card um, against Goki Extra Link or any deck that wants to Extra Link you. Decks that wanna set up really big Extra Link boards and just prevent you from special summoning, you just Cyber Dragon them and then turn that into a plus. Uh, three copies of Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, still one of the better hand traps in the format, stopping really good cards. Uh, three copies of Shared Ride. I wanna share a ride with my opponent. <laughs> Drawing cards has never felt so good, especially in this deck. Uh, if the more resources you have, the more opportunities you can have to break your opponent's board. Three copies of Evenly Matched. Um, this card is just unfair, especially in this deck. Imagine evenly matching your opponent then following up with a Necros of Trishula. Um, it, it, I really debated on main boarding this and making it a go second Necros deck, but it just didn't feel necessary. And then lastly was three copies of Red Reboot for back row decks. That's it for the main board, sideboard, and extra deck. I have a couple of necessarily tips slash combos that I can show you. Might help you with the Necros deck. All right, guys. So I'm going to level with you. Uh, I have so many decks and so much stuff like out right now. I can't expand it to show you guys a full map. But with that being said, I will announce that I am planning on doing some live duels. Smash that like button. Destroy that like button. Let me know that you really like Necros so we can get you guys a live duel of it. So these combos are relatively simple. Um, Manju is going to be a big counterpart. Any of the incantation monsters are going to be a big counterpart. And then like uh, these guys are your ultimate setup guys. So I'm going to say with this particular combo, we're just going to open up with three these three cards. This is what you would do. Normal summon Manju with the 10,000 hands and activate its effect. Now in this particular situation because i have candol instead of um talismandra i'm going to need the spell card to trigger off candol so i'm going to get kaleidoscope and no matter what as long as you wind up with uh uh any two any two of the copies of unicorn uh kaleidoscope or necros then you're perfectly fine next i'm going to use candol's effect to special summon itself to my side of the field to bring out talismandra and talismandra's effect is going to activate to get necros of unicorn so currently this is my hand I'm going to go ahead and use Necros of Kaleidoscope's effect, sending Shooting Quasar Dragon from my deck to the graveyard. And that's going to special summon both of these monsters to my side of the field. Lastly, I'm going to go ahead and use Valkyrie's effect, tributing both my Incantation monsters, or really any two monsters, it doesn't really matter. So all of these cards are attributed to draw two additional cards. So basically that little three card combo is going to get you the ability to negate your, all your opponent's monsters effect face up. It's going to get you a draw two. It's going to get you a Manju on your side of the field. These two monsters could actually be used for something for, actually it can't be used for a link play. These two monsters could be used for uh, an XC play, a link play, whatever you guys play. But I felt that this was so powerful because Necros got me some draws. Hopefully we got into a way to get into Gungnir, which would be really powerful at protecting Unicorn. And we also can negate our opponent's uh, extra deck monster effect. Effects. Um, if you guys just do it regularly, um, you won't be able to draw, but you'll still be able to protect your unicorn. It's just Manju and basically any Incantatia, you'll get the exact same results. I'll use Talismandra this time around. What you're going to do is normal some of the Manju, and with Manju, I'm going to search Unicorn instead. It's really important that I search Unicorn if I have Talismandra. I search Kaleidoscope if I have uh, Candol. So use Talismandra's effect to summon itself to the side of the field. And then that's gonna special summon Candol. Candol's effect is gonna add Kaleidoscope from my deck to my hand. And then I'm gonna go ahead and activate Kaleidoscope. This time around, instead of shooting Quasar Dragon, Kaleidoscope is going to send 
Herald of Arclight from my deck to my graveyard to special summon Unicorn to my side of the field. Now, Herald of Arclight's effect is going to activate. That's going to add Necrols of Valkyries from my deck to my hand. Now, I can't necessarily tribute these cards off or use them for a link play because that's what the, the incantation monsters prevent me from doing so. But I do have Necrols of Unicorn and protection from attacks with the Necrols of Valkyries. You can similarly search um, Necrols of Gungnir in any way shape or form again the last thing i want to show you guys it's not necessarily a combo it's just i hope you guys take this knowledge and leave you this card's really powerful the reason why is because this card plus this card will allow you to almost ritual summon any other monster from your deck uh you have these two monsters we'll send a level 10 synchro monster send a level 11 synchro monster just send a level eight if you want to summon both of these monsters or you can just send the regular five send nine or six um uh, sin sin 12 the only one you can't do with summoning is decisive armor which is fine because all of these monsters are still available to your arsenal um this deck is really powerful it's really explosive it's reactive to what your opponent plays but also most importantly you want to be trishing your opponent to deplete the resources you want to summon these this guy because he's actually really powerful at negating your opponent's monster effects him is good at negating he is good at negating your opponent's monster effects and this card is good at drawing you cards to protect your opponent from attacks Thank you guys so much for watching another segment of the Cali Effect. I really hope you guys enjoyed that little, like, combo-esque type tutorial. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, go ahead and leave a like. If you didn't enjoy the video or uh, what I had to present, go ahead and comment down below in the comment section what you thought. Please like, comment, subscribe, but most of all, enjoy. I hope you guys are having a great day like I am.